I still I still think you can see okay. <laughs> um, today's today's topic is interpersonal relationships. I think just now we had a very interesting um, discussion discussion because it was like four groups, four different scenarios, but all of us we fall into the four groups because we face with our family, colleagues, boss and whatever. So today I'd like to share with you interpersonal relations of the next slide. Okay, relationships. I was just going through the PowerPoint and then um, I thought about this because today is um, from Wendy's presentation we can say that all of us are interconnected so we are faced with lots of relationships. But then if we were to look at the word relate, relating, related, relationship, do they mean the same thing? Relate. Relate, relating, related, relationship. How do I relate with you? How do you relate this, um, this incident? Relate. What's the connection? Relating. How can we have a sentence on relating? How do you make a sentence on relating? Are we, are we relating as we should be? Oh, are we relating as we should be? Okay, so are we related as we should be? We could be cousins, but we're actually fighting with each other. We could be um, brothers and sisters who don't even meet, meet, meet each other at all. And our relationship, what's our relationship? We are supposed to be siblings, but in actual fact, we aren't. We may be connected by blood, we are, but we are not as close as we should be. Or we are not connected by blood, but we are closer than that. Okay. So whatever it is, when we look at relationships, it's all about being connected and also being interconnected. Because nobody is a... we can't live alone. All of us, in a way or another, we are connected. So the problem is, since we are connected, how connected are we? And how do we want to be connected? We could be connected in a positive way, we could be connected in a negative way. Okay, next. Um, we look at this. Just I can do it. Oh. Sorry. I'll do it. Okay, the next one is accept. From the previous slide, we see that all of us, we are connected, either in whichever way we are. So the next part is we hope to be accepted by each other. I am connected with you, but it doesn't mean that you accept me. You are connected with me, but it doesn't mean that I accept you. Acceptance means um, happiness. It means a more cohesive um, relationship. It means joyous. It means less fighting. It means the positive part. So how do we want to be accepted by others? Do we accept? Do I accept you in my heart? Do I accept you in my in my company, in my job? Do, you, do I accept you in my family? Do I accept you in my temple? Do I accept you into prajna? Do I accept you into, into just this community? For example, someone steps, comes in and says, oh, we don't like you, please go away, don't come again. Or we are always, of, always opening up our hearts and our hands to accept people into our group, whichever group this belongs to. Accept. So, I hope to accept people and I hope to be accepted. When I stand here, I hope that you will be listening to me and you'll be nodding you know, and clapping and smiling, which shows that I am accepted. Does it, mean, does it really mean to me, is it so important whether you clap along the way, you smile along the way? It may not be exactly that important whether you just look at me, staring at me, or are you connecting with me? This is what I want. I would like to know accepted and also acceptance. So what I'd like to share with you today is actually how to be accepted by others. Just now when you shared with us a slide by Master Singyun, this four or five points is also by Master Singyun. He says to be accepted by others. Being accepted means we will have a positive interpersonal relationships. The first one, our words. The words that come out from us, be it our language or the words that we write, we speak, we think, 
is it accepted by others? For example, um, this is an English-speaking community. If you were to speak Cantonese here, will you be accepted? If you were to speak Indonesian, speak Hindi, no matter how good are you in that language, this is not our common language, you will not be accepted. Okay? Language. Or the choice of words. I may be speaking to a common language with you, um, English, but then I'm scolding you, I'm quarreling, I'm using harsh words, will my words be accepted? Okay? So the first thing is our words. If I want to be accepted by you, but I don't have the quality that you will accept, how are you going to accept me? How can I expect myself to have a good, positive, interpersonal relationship? The second one, actions. What kind of people would we like around us? We like people who smile when you talk, who look at you, ah, oh, you're doing such a good job, you know, things like that. What do we like? What kind of people do we like around us? Hmm? Positive people? Yeah, who else? What else? Loving and kind. Loving and kind, okay. Loving and kind, positive, tender, um, someone who's nice. Nice in whatever way we think it's nice to us. So, if I want to be accepted by you, I hope that I am nice to you. Or at least you think that I am nice. Nice is a very generic word, but we just define it in whatever way we think. Whatever is nice, it's nice. Okay, so actions should be something that people should accept. Number three, attitude. Attitude. There was, um, when I was first in the Buddhist college, that was about 16 years ago, my, my teacher, my class, that teacher in charge, the very in charge of our class, she says that, I think you are very arrogant. Then I thought, was I ever arrogant? You know the word arrogant, oh, she said proud, proud. She said, she said proud. So I was like, oh, when am I ever proud? I didn't even know that I was proud. So what is this? What is the attitude? Sometimes we are really proud or arrogant or I think highly of myself because I can do A, B, C, D while you can't. You know, I can do one, two, three, four. You can't even do anything, any one of them. I think so highly of myself. This could be self-confident, but on the other hand, it's actually proud. It's actually a pride proud or arrogance. So what is the attitude that we are portraying to others? I think I'm good. Most of us, we think that we are good. We wouldn't know how not as good we are. But if we were to pick around, you know, ask the people around us, especially the people who are closest to us, those people who are not exactly, um, who doesn't, who are more open-minded to us, who are actually will tell us the real things about us, the truth about us, maybe we can ask them, you know, what do you think of me, Betty? Very good. Very good. <laughs> I'm not sure how good is how good, okay? How sincere is that? It's very sincere. <laughs> <laughs> ask the people around us, you know what do you think? Um, what was that? How was I yesterday? How was I just now? What do you think? How could I improve? <coughs> Things like that. Be more genuine in ourselves. But of course, she could say that, oh, you are actually quite good, very good, but one, two, three, four. You know, you could have been, you could have been, you could have been. I would prefer. These words at the back, the one, two, three, four, may not sound so good to us, actually. Although I tell, I will ask Wendy, could you please say something not as good, uh, not too good about me so that I can improve? But when she says, I'm usually sad. This was like, oh, you really, you spoke my heart. You spoke my heart and you poke my heart. It's actually quite sad. But then, could we, if I want to be accepted by others, could I just open myself up? You know, I need to pull my heart apart. No, not apart, but you know, we have to actually pull ourselves a bit wider, have a bigger heart somewhere so that these genuine words can come in, these genuine thoughts can come in, these genuine suggestions can come in, so that I could be accepted by others. The number four. Number four is style. My style. Um, what is my style? The way you carry yourself. Huh? The way you carry yourself. Yeah, the way that I carry myself, the way that I project myself. 
the way I carry myself is actually something very natural. My style could be different from yours. But the way that I want to project myself could be different, as in the way I, um, I relate to you, the way I talk to you, and the way I talk to you could be different, because I would project myself a different way in different scenarios. So my style, is my style accepted by this group of people that I am interacting with, okay? And number five, my way of thinking, do we have right thoughts? You know, at least in the BLIA community, say good words, do good deeds, and think good thoughts. Are you, do you have the positive thinking here? If all our thoughts here are not as positive, naturally it wouldn't be as accepted by this community. So what kind of thoughts do I have? Okay, so these are the five things that Master suggests that if I want to be accepted by others, words, actions, attitude, my style, and my way of thinking. So I thought this five is quite useful because when we talk about interpersonal relationships, we are always thinking that how could I be better? How could I have a better relationships with others? How could others treat me in a better way? But have we ever thought that how can I be accepted by others? You know, how could you treat me better and how could I be accepted by you is actually two different mentality, two different mindset. Because I could think that you could have been better to me, you could have been kinder to me, you could have been more gentle to me, but if I think it from my side, my point of view, my, my, my point of view how can I be accepted by you? It will be more positive, more proactive on my side. So in the Buddhist context or the Buddhist teachings, we come back to ourselves. How can I be more proactive with myself? Okay, so these are the five points. And to end this, I would like to... Sorry, next, okay. We will end with a short meditation tonight. Why are we doing meditation at the end of this session instead of the beginning? Number one, because we had a very good dinner. Usually, meditation doesn't really work after a good dinner. Okay, so we put it at the end here. It is about one and a half hours away from dinner. We will be more focused on meditation instead. The second thing is that today we are talking about interpersonal relations. What does meditation help us? Meditation, right, mindfulness. It helps us to calm down. Why do we fight? Why do we quarrel? Why am I hurt? Why am I not happy? Because I'm not calm. My reaction is just too fast. You know, if some words come in, I'll just react immediately. What for? Take a step. Sometimes it's good to be a bit slow. So meditation here helps us to calm down, be a bit slow. At times where we don't have to be so fast, calmness. Calmness of the mind, calmness of our heart. But calmness, what does it bring us? It doesn't make us, uh, it doesn't, being calm doesn't make us slow. And um, what's another word for slow? As in, you don't react as and when you should be. No. What happens in meditation is from calmness, it gives us a tender heart. Why am I angry? Because my heart is burning. I'm just irritated, but if I have a tender heart, as in like a softer heart, will I be reacting so fast? No, I wouldn't be punching you, I'll just be like, oh, oh, oh yeah, okay, that's it, you know? So meditation got, uh, helps us to get calmness, from calmness to a tender heart. From a tender heart, what comes after that? We don't stop at a tender heart. Compassion and wisdom comes in. With compassion, with wisdom, of course, it helps to our how we're going to interact with each other, our interpersonal relationships. So this um, is a way of cultivation from the Buddhist perspective. Meditation has all these positive um, results that results in a better interpersonal relationship. So um, any questions so far? No? All very calm. <laughs> okay, we will do a very simple meditation. Just sit up straight. Okay, sit up straight. Take down your glasses if you think you need to. And don't lean against the back. We will just do a five minute meditation to end off. Okay, don't lean against the chair. 
gently close your eyes. We will start to relax. Relax from the top of your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your face. Relax your shoulders. Relax your spine. Relax your thighs. Relax your legs. Relax your toes. Relax the whole body. Concentrate on your breath and meditation begins. You rub your hands together. Place your warm palms onto your face. Shot me.